Hi, in this video we're going to be having a look at this audio DAC and headphone amplifier. So what this is, is it's a device that you connect to your computer, so you plug in the USB port and you plug in power to this device and it's got a 16-bit DAC in it um, which will allow you to either drive your headphones directly by plugging them into the port on the front or you can connect this to your hi-fi um, and connect your amplifier to the um, line level output on the back here. And what this is good for is effectively um, things like laptops that notoriously have really bad sound cards built in. Um, and when you want to listen to uh, music with a bit more fidelity, um, you tend to use something like this um, just because it's got a dedicated DAC. Um, you know, you've sort of isolated the um, power supply away from all of the digital buses that are in the computer. Um, and then this one also has a dedicated headphone amplifier uh, for driving your headphones rather than just relying on the output from the uh, DAC. So this one was provided to me free of charge by Banggood. It's the FX98S and is currently retailing for £47. Um, you can get it in black or silver, I quite like the look of the black one. And it comes with an AC adapter, so it's, this is just a standard sort of 12 volt, 1.5 amp affair. I'm pretty sure it won't need 1.5 amps to drive your headphones, um, but I won't be using this, I'll be using my own adapter. Um, but you can choose that with an Australian, an EU or a US uh, plug format, there's no UK option here. So what this has in it is the Texas Instruments PCM2704, which is a 16-bit DAC, an NJW1144, which is a sound processor, uh, and then the MAX9722 headphone amplifier. So I've used the Texas Instruments DAC um, many times before. I did make a whole load of uh, different DAC boards because I, I do quite like um, audio electronics. Um, this was uh, one of the boards that I made. This is a really stripped down version. This is literally um, seeing what the minimum number of components you really need to get an acceptable sound output is. Uh, so this is sort of the USB input in, uh, a little bit of power supply circuitry, the PCM2704, um, and then sort of the AC um, coupling um, so that you don't have any DC bias on the jack. Uh, but this had lots of options, you can populate it in lots of different ways. I might do a video on this at some point. Uh, but that DAC is, um, is a very nice DAC. It works really well. You don't need to um, install any drivers as such on Windows. Um, it's automatically detected. Um, and it's got pretty good features really. There's a whole family of them, PCM 2704, 2705, 2706 and 2707. Um, they all have very slight differences, but the basic operation is the same. So you can have the sampling rate at 32, 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. Uh, it just needs a single crystal um, and then you get your, um, your stereo sound output. Um, there's a few different interfaces. I think one of them does have um, an I2S interface as well. Um, so yeah, I think that the PCM2707, you can connect to an I2S interface instead of the USB. Um, but yeah, I mean, it has perfectly reasonable specs. Um, I've certainly listened to more expensive DACs and not really noticed too much of a difference. It just sounds like, um, you know, the sound should be transparent through your audio system. Um, so certainly this device gives that impression. It's, um, it's certainly not too bad at all. So we've also got an NJW1144 in the device, um, and this is sort of an audio processor. Um, it's got an input selection MUX, an auto gain control, which um, hopefully won't interfere with the sound too much. I'm hoping that you can sort of turn off any enhancements that it might do. Um, you've got your volume control, uh, and then there's, there is like a, a 3D processor to give um, sort of pseudo surround sound. Uh, we've got BBE, which is, um, you don't see that very often on devices anymore, but that used to be um, sort of a sound enhancement filter, uh, tone control, um, and then volume again. So you can sort of adjust the gain before it goes into these stages or after. Um, and then finally, there's a headphone amplifier um, so that you can hopefully drive slightly more tricky loads. So I do have some headphones um, some 250 ohm headphones. I think I've got some 600 ohm headphones here. I'm not sure if they'll work or not. Uh, but those tend to be slightly tricky loads um, for your laptop to drive, for example, because it doesn't have the drive strength for 600 ohm um, headphones. Um, but this uh, certainly has perfectly reasonable specifications as well. Um, it says here 70 milliwatts into a 16 ohm load or 130 milliwatts into a 32 ohm load. So as with any audio device, it's going to be a little bit tricky to give sort of scientific data in terms of how well it's performing. 
Uh, I also don't have a, a distortion meter or anything like that um, in the lab. But what we'll do is we'll connect it up to the PC um, and we'll give it power. Okay, so um, it went through, through a little sequence there of booting up. Uh, oddly, it's turned on, but the power light doesn't light up even though it was on in the sequence. Um, and it's automatically selected the USB input. Um, these green LEDs are ridiculously bright, so we might have to do something about that uh, when we take it apart. Uh, but I think, basically, we should be able to select the input, so you can either, either choose uh, the USB input or the two analogue inputs. Uh, there is a mute, mute function associated with this button, so I'm assuming that we hold this down. Yeah, and that mutes it. Uh, we've got the SRS button, which is the sound enhancement. And I think there's a few different SRS modes, so... For, so it takes four presses to cycle through between the light being on and off, so um, there'll probably be a few different enhancements there. And then BBE as well, uh, which is another sort of sound enhancement feature that... Um, yeah, these two, these two things used to feature quite a lot in uh, very uh, sort of 90s and early 2000 audio equipment. Uh, I think this, um, this chip, the NJW1144, is obsolete now. Um, which um, I think is partly down to the fact that we don't really use cassette players or anything like that, which is where it was quite popular. Um, CD players and MP3s to some extent and uh, lossless audio files don't really need any other enhancements. They should play quite well just as they are. Um, then we've got the volume control here. Um, this appears to be a rotary encoder, so we can just turn it up and down. Um, I'm not seeing anything change on the PC in terms of the volume control, so I think this is changing the volume control on the audio processor. So the PCM2704 does actually enumerate as a HID class for controlling the volume directly on the PC. So you can use um, the PCM2704 to control the volume, but I think, yeah, this rotary encoder isn't changing anything on the PC, so I think this is changing the, uh, the volume on this chip. Um, there's also treble and bass control, um, there's no more buttons, so, um, oh yeah, you can press the button to um, to change the bass, so you can turn it up and down, and similarly with the treble. Um, so, I don't know whether it remembers those settings, um, but I'm going to plug in some headphones now and just see what it sounds like. Right, so I've just been having a listen to this DAC and headphone amplifier. Uh, I'm using the Biodynamic T90 headphones, um, which are really nice headphones. And yeah, this sounds really, really good. Um, the BBE and the SRS sound enhancements just completely ruin the sound. So leave those turned off if you're going to use uh, one of these. Uh, but the straight through unmodified sound is really good. Uh, the problem that I found with this, with these particular headphones, uh, which are high, higher impedance, these are 250 ohms, um, is that the volume at the very maximum that this can output is probably what I would describe as normal listening volume. So you don't get any distortion or anything like that. It, it works well. It's just that that's the maximum volume that you can listen to is what you would describe as standard listening levels. If you're listening on 32 ohm headphones, then obviously there's no problem whatsoever. Um, this will go deafeningly loud. So the first thing to say about this device is actually the construction is very nice. I don't think I mentioned it at the start of the video, uh, but the whole thing is made from anodized aluminium and it's got a really nice silk screened uh, front panel and rear panel. So yeah, really, uh, really nice quality. And the electronics design is also pretty good. So is the PCB layout. Uh, we've got our DC input here through a reverse protection diode, through a 330 nanohenry uh, inductor for a bit of filtering a 2200 microfarad Nichicon uh, electrolytic capacitor and then into some linear regulators. So we've got a 7805, a 7905 for a 9 volt rail and uh, AMS1117 adjustable voltage regulator. And then just here we've got our USB um, audio DAC, so the PCM2704 with the passives needed around the USB port to um, get it to work in the correct mode and so that the PC can detect that there is a, uh, a device connected. This is running in um, the circuit powered mode rather than being powered from the USB port. Um, so I think the only connection from the five volt port, uh, five volt connection on the USB lead is just to tell this device that uh, a PC is connected. So 
we shouldn't get too much conducted noise from the PC. We've then got the, uh, the audio inputs here and we've got a series of capacitors so all of these audio inputs have to be capacitively coupled into the JRC1144 so we've got left and right for the uh, USB DAC, uh, left and right for this analog input here and then left and right here for the uh, little 3.5 millimeter jack. Um, we've got our headphone connector here, so this is just a standard stereo 6.35 millimeter connector. We have our JRC1144, which is basically following the design that's in the datasheet from what I can see. Uh, and then we've got our headphone amplifier, um, and um, we've got a chipped, uh, so the headphone amplifier is down here, sorry. Uh, and then we've got an output buffer here um, and a little filter with a uh, in an op amp and interestingly this is in a, uh, a dip socket so those that like to swap out their op amps for whatever reason can swap out their op, op amp here this is a NE5532 that's currently in here uh, but if you do want to change it for something slightly more exotic um, certainly you can do and then we've just got an STM8 8-bit microcontroller here which is just doing sort of the housekeeping on the PCB so it's reading in the input from the uh, rotary encoder driving all of the LEDs, looking for the key presses, and then I think actually it's only interfacing with the JRC1144 because the PCM2704 doesn't need any configuration. The, um, the Max headphone amplifier doesn't need any interfacing as well, that just takes in the input directly, um, and obviously the op amp doesn't need any digital interface. So I think this is just driving the JRC1144 um, to select between the inputs, turn on the uh, sound enhancements, and um, also do the volume control. And then on the rear of the board, there aren't any components, they're just uh, all of the through-hole components that have been hand-soldered onto the board. Uh, it's a little bit messy in terms of uh, the fact that there's still flux residue that's not being cleaned off, but the actual solder joint quality, certainly no complaints from what I can see. Um, the, uh, the refo process for the SMT components is obviously absolutely fine. Everything looks uh, really good on here. So I think one of the things that I might do um, in the near future is swap out those LEDs because the green ones in particular are uh, pretty offensive. They're really piercingly bright and when it's going to be sat on the shelf uh, shining in your eyes um, it's going to get annoying pretty quick. But other than that uh, I would have no problem in recommending this um, to anyone who's looking for a USB DAC or a USB headphone amplifier. Um, the sound quality is very nice. Obviously you can spend a lot more money and there are some improvements that could be made so you could use a better headphone amplifier and obviously in my case one that can swing the voltage higher uh, would be preferable so that I can drive my headphones a little bit better uh, but generally speaking I mean there's no uh, complaints over the sound quality and certainly I've got some expensive DACs and headphone amplifiers and the increase in quality compared to the increase in price is uh, not proportional so um, for £47 you're actually getting quite a lot for your money. Uh, there are a couple of other devices on the Banggood website, so some different variants. I think there is one with a 24-bit DAC which might be interesting to look at, uh, but in terms of this one at £47, certainly no problems whatsoever. So if you are looking for one of these for your bench or uh, for work, um, so you can listen to your music at your desk without uh, listening to the sound card that's built into your laptop, uh, I definitely recommend this. This does actually seem legitimately good value for money and, and quite good quality. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, the links are down below for this um, and if you go on that link obviously you can have a look at some of the other devices um, that Banggood sell. Uh, there's quite a few from the FX Audio brand. Um, I've not really heard of it. I think it is a, a Chinese brand but certainly uh, by looking at their products that they've got they've got a good range of products that uh, do seem to be sort of priced really competitively um, and if this one at 50 quid is, is pretty good then uh, I'm sure some of the more expensive ones are equally good. So um, yeah I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, leave a comment down below for any suggestions or if you've got any comments. Press the bell button to be notified of future uploads but until next time thanks for watching.